Well, well, hello everybody, Pastor Randy here. Welcome to Making It Simple. Hope you're doing great today. Looking forward to being with you for this next portion of our teaching. We've been talking about what is victory. Now, one of the things that was on my heart this morning as I was preparing and thinking, what I want everybody to understand is when I speak of victory, I speak not of a one moment thing. I, sp I speak not of, again, what we would consider that in this life necessarily as far as, you know, now I've got enough money to retire. Now I've got this. All those things are great. Uh, and I don't, I don't disparage anything. I work for those very same things myself. What I want us to understand is the victory that we're offered through coming to know Christ is the ability to, to actually live the life that he's given us, to live it in such a way that others can see that knowing him is beneficial and that we are able to face circumstances as they come because that's life. You know, none of us are exempt. I'm certainly not. My goodness, you know, I, I, I have the same struggles as everybody else whether it's stress and worry and doubt and fear, whether it's financial hardship, whether it's family issues, whatever. But none of us are exempt, and we'll, and we'll look at that. But when it comes to sin issues, when it comes to things that steal our joy, when it comes to temptations, when it comes, we're all susceptible to that. Nobody is exempt. However, when we come to know the power of Christ, when we come to know that indwelling, and the power of the Holy Spirit, then we are able to see, wait a minute, I can jump this hurdle. I, I can climb this mountain. Because then we have that spirit of victory rather than the one of defeat. Because while things may not always go the way that we want them to or end the way that we want them to, when we trust God for the victory, it will come. It may not be in the manner that we thought. It, it may not be in the time that we thought, but it will come. But there's the problem. We talked about this yesterday when we ended off the broadcast yesterday. I believe, but do I doubt? You see, because the problem with that is when the two things are in place, one absolutely can have the power to overcome the other. My strength in my belief, my leaning on my belief can overcome the doubt. Just as if I lean on the doubt and the I'm not sure, it can absolutely impact the belief and in some cases throw it right out the window. Simply put, any effort that we make to live for God outside of the way that he prescribed for it to be, which is accepting Christ, okay? Many people have a mere religion. Many people have a, at, at best, an acquaintance, an acknowledgement, if you will, a very surface level, uh, it wouldn't take... It really wouldn't take a hard wind to blow it down type relationship with God because there's been no surrender there. It, it's been, it's been well, I, I do this, I do that, I'm a good person. But the problem with that is if we are, number one, trying to earn our way, you can't because it's not capable. We're not possible to do that. We don't have the capacity. Number two, I'm depending on me. And if we solely 100% depend on us to accomplish whatever it is that we're doing with no effort that can be derived from anywhere else, no source of help, no source of strength, no, no anything, then we're only as strong as we are. We're only as capable as we are. I mean, it's like walking into a classroom uh, of, a, of, a, of a particular subject that you've never taken. You've never seen it. You don't know anything about it, but yet still refuse to listen to the teacher and just say, go ahead and give me the test. Well, you're depending solely on you. 
and you will fail. Life is a massive, massive journey, and it's not easy. And that's not to be negative or, or pessimistic or any other kind of thing. That's real. And when we're constantly struggling to find our answer, in other words, I need to find a way. I need to do this or that. I need to figure it out. The problem with that is our resource is limited. Just think about that for a minute. Just think about that. I, I gave the illustration yesterday. If I'm going out on the field and I'm going to win this game all by myself, I don't need my teammates, you're going to lose. Yeah, that's just that simple. I'm going to take on this project, and I'm not going to have anybody assist me. I got it. Okay. You may have the capacity. You may have the intellect. But can you do it efficiently? We're not talking about dependence on others in the sense that I can't make it through this life without them. However, if we look at the twofold statement in Genesis where God said it is not good that man should be alone, many people only equate that to relationship in a spousal sense, in a, in a you know, significant other, whatever, whatever you want to call it, but in particular a, a husband or a wife. But that's not what God was talking about. While companionship is absolutely important in life, there are many people that don't have that and they do just fine. What God was speaking of is, I want to walk with you. It is not good that you be without me. It's your choice. You don't have to. I'm not going to make you. God's prescribed order of victory is, includes and absolutely encompasses our relationship with Christ. Do all need that? Yes, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So therefore, we're all under that banner. We talked about that in what is sin. Romans 3 and 9 also makes it clear that all are under sin. It says Jew and Gentile. In other words, there is no exception. None. Doesn't matter what race, creed, or color that you are. No matter what country you come from, no matter if you're a man or a woman, and that's the only two things there are, and it doesn't matter. We're all under that. There are no exceptions. So victory over that is needed, and it should be desired. I can't do this alone. How many times have we uttered that in our life? And, and we're looking at it oftentimes from the capacity of Leaning on the leaning on the help of another, and that's fine. But when we continue to try to overcome and 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 defeat the things that are truly causing us issues, where do we turn? Do we turn to our own efforts, or do we turn and trust in what God offers us? The word redemption. It means the act of redeeming. The, the act of rescue or ransom, that, that which redeems salvation, redemption. That's not a word we hear about a lot, but we, we hear it sometimes in the context of a speech. Oh, they've been redeemed or whatever. It's a great old hymn to redeem, redeem. Uh, the death of Christ provided everything. Okay, we have to understand that when Jesus said it is finished it made it possible for us to be redeemed for us to obtain victory in other words the power of bondage was broken it was broken that day and liberty victory freedom became a real possibility in other words every time that we utter how can I do this? That, that, that no longer had to be the only option on the table. See, as we continually turn to our own efforts, we continue to get more and more frustrated. The longer you scroll your phone looking for that golden opportunity, the longer you keep doing this or doing that and never turning to our true resource, 
I want to use this illustration walking around on the pulpit with a power cord. All day long, I'm walking around with this power cord. This was the illustration. And, and, I've, and, I've, and I can't figure out why none of the lamps are coming on. Friends, we do that all the time. I, 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 I. And yet still we have access to the ultimate victory. We have access to the one with the answer. And yet still we never plug the cord in. We never tap into our power source. See, the necessary word that we have to that we have to come to, and we're going to close with this today, is the word overcomer. What does that mean? Why is that necessary? So we go back to, again, everything is provided. And it was done so at the cross. The old hymn says, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. I first saw the light. Yeah, great Hank Williams song too. But what do, what do we have happen in seeing the light? That which was not visible is now visible. In other words, I could never see the finish line. I could never see the end zone. I could never see home plate. But now I can. Friends, we obtained this victory through the light of the world. His name is Jesus. It's our only answer. He's our only answer. In this understanding of what is victory, it comes back down to the fact that Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave on the cross. Will we believe that? And if we do, will we apply it to our life? We're going to talk more about this tomorrow as we come back and look at the word overcomer. What does that mean? It's a big word, but what does it mean? And how does that apply to my life individually as we look in the mirror? God bless you. Thank you for joining me today. I pray that this has been a blessing, and I pray that this whole lesson, what is victory, will really be, uh, really be something that you'll give some thought to and realize whether you have it or not. And if you don't, by the end of this, that you'll know exactly how to get it. God bless you, Lord willing. I'll see you tomorrow.